It's not every day you see an army general become the leader of the Taliban, but Colonel Imam is exactly that. With his white turban, untrimmed beard and an old army jacket, Colonel Imam is a Pakistani enigma. He spent 20 years moving rebels in and out of Afghanistan, first to fight the Soviet army and then to help the Taliban as Pakistani allies in their effort to take Afghanistan in the 1990s. He was a US-trained former colonel in Pakistan's espionage service. Today's video looks at the honored general who was killed by the very people he sought to empower. This is the story of Colonel Imam. The Man, the Myth Previously known as Brigadier Sultan Amir Tara, a Pakistani Army one-star rank military officer, Colonel Imam was an intriguing and mysterious personality. His story has probably been read repeatedly by many of his young followers. Colonel Imam's mythology arose during the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan and the subsequent multinational coalition created to combat the Soviet Union. Colonel Imam was important in the organization and management of multiple secret guerrilla training camps in Afghanistan's border areas, where he led the Afghan Jihad. He was in charge of recruiting madrasa students and preparing them as Taliban and Afghan Jihad foot fighters. Colonel Imam trained the Mujahideen, lived among them, looked and acted like them, and was a devout follower of the Taliban's obscurantist Islamic teaching. He led the Taliban into prayers and war. With his ragtag force, he struck far inside Afghanistan, right up to the Panjshir Valley. Colonel Imam fought Soviet soldiers, shot down gunship helicopters, and did many brave things. He was so beloved by the Taliban that they bestowed the title of Imam upon him. Amir Sultan Tahrir's exact history and operational characteristics as an ISI agent are unknown. However, most information regarding Colonel Imam came from his own admissions and news media supposition. However, such information is unavailable due to Pakistan's secrecy over internal and external security and the rule of conduct for Pakistan Armed Forces soldiers functioning in sensitive institutions. Amir Sultan Tara, however, conducted interviews with international and domestic journalists. Tara's initial objectives following Mujahideen infighting following the Soviet withdrawal and before his involvement with the Taliban were unclear. His goal at the time was to make new friends in Pakistan from whom he could later operate, such as Akhanzada of Helmland, a warlord with 17,000 men under his command who had a blood feud with Hikmatyar. Colonel Imam claimed that the Soviets placed a 200 million Afghani reward on him during their time in Afghanistan. He further said that when he delivered operational specifics regarding the anti-Soviet battle to Aslam Baig following General Zia's death, the latter was taken aback by the scope. Colonel Imam confirmed meeting Osama bin Laden in 1986 in Cathay Schofield's book Inside the Pakistan Army. He sounds like quite the character, almost like a super agent. Even as a young man receiving training at Fort Bragg, Colonel Imam was proficient, from army to Taliban. Colonel Imam's mythology arose during the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan and the subsequent multinational coalition created to combat the Soviet Union. Colonel Sultan Amir Tara graduated from the Pakistani Military Academy in Kakul. He then went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina for commando training. After graduation, he was assigned as a second lieutenant to the 15th Frontier Force Regiment. In 1974, he returned to the United States to train with the U.S. Special Forces. He received the Green Beret after graduation. Following his return from the United States, he joined the Special Service Group. After that, the then Army officer worked as a guerrilla operations expert and as a member and officer of the Inter-Services Intelligence, or ISI. He was also the Pakistani Consul General in Herat at one point. In 1989, the USSR disintegrated into a dozen sovereign republics following its loss in Afghanistan. The United States and its allies had defeated the Soviet Union for the first time in the Cold War. In response, 
Colonel Imam was asked to visit the United States by American President George W. Bush. He was greeted with the etiquette intended for foreign dignitaries in Washington, D.C. A fragment of the Berlin Wall with a brass plate was gifted to him by George W. Bush. To the one who struck first, the plaque said. Colonel Imam was a key figure in defeating Russian forces in Afghanistan. He was important to the management and organization of multiple secret guerrilla training camps in Afghanistan's border areas, where he led the Afghan Jihad. He was in charge of recruiting Madrasa students and preparing them as Taliban and Afghan Jihad foot soldiers. Colonel Imam trained the Mujahideen, lived among them, looked and acted like them, and was a devout follower of the Taliban's obscurantist Islamic teaching. He led the Taliban into war and to prayers. With his ragtag force, he struck far inside Afghanistan, right up to the Panjshir Valley. Colonel Imam fought Soviet soldiers, shot down gunship helicopters, and did valiant things. He was so beloved by the Taliban, they bestowed the title of Imam upon him. They appreciated him much for his achievements. From ally to infidel. While there is no official confirmation of his death, people close to his family claim that the intelligence sources told them of Colonel Imam's death. On March 26, 2010, a lesser-known Taliban organization, Asian Tigers, kidnapped Imam, another former ISI officer squadron leader Kawaja Khalid, and British journalist Asad Qureshi while travelling to the North Waziristan tribal region. Qureshi was released in September after paying a $20 million ransom. Still, in April 2010, Kawaja's body was discovered by a creek in Karamkot, some seven kilometers south of North Waziristan's major town of Mirali, with a letter claiming he was with the CIA and ISI. In September, 2010, Qureshi and Khan were released. Colonel Imam was killed in custody, according to a video posted by Pakistan's Tehreek-e-Taliban. The killing was reportedly opposed by the Haqqani network and the Afghan Taliban. Colonel Imam's kidnappers demanded payment before releasing his body to his family. It was January 2011 when Haki Mullah Mehsud the head of the tariq e taliban Pakistan, or TTP, rode over the snow-covered valley in Waziristan. His gun-toting murderous minions trailed in other cars as he rode in his land cruiser. They parked on a winding road and pulled a prisoner behind them as they exited their trucks. Colonel Imam, the renowned spook of the inter-services intelligence and a long-standing friend of the Afghan Taliban and the TTP, was the prisoner. He remained dejectedly quiet. His gaze was drawn below. He had the appearance of a lamb being carried to the slaughter. Colonel Imam was chastised by Mesud for betraying the Taliban in a brief speech. Colonel Imam's specific offense was failing to transform Pakistan into a truly Islamic state while receiving money from Osama bin Laden to do so. Colonel Imam was accused of defrauding people who had faith in him. Imam was sentenced to death by Mesud. The sound of gunshots echoed throughout the valley, and the TTP had lost a wonderful friend, trainer, and patron. In exchange for freeing of the two former ISI officials, the abductors requested the release of two captured Taliban commanders, Mullah Kabir and Mullah Mansour Dadullah, they then added other demands, including the release of terrorists held by Pakistani security forces in connection with the assaults on the GHQ and Royal Pindi's Parade Line Mosque. According to accounts, Mullah Omar, the Taliban's reclusive boss, had personally fought for Imam's release. Mullah Omar's intervention prevented the Taliban from killing Imam for several months. Before his capture, Imam allegedly arranged a peace pact between the military and Haqqani network commander Jalaluddin Haqqani. The kidnappers sought to swap the two former spies with the terrorists detained in connection with two high-profile terrorist attacks in Rawalpindi. According to General Hamid Gul, 
a former ISI head and Colonel Imam's colleague. Colonel Imam's kidnapping, according to Go, might be linked to the United States and its private security outfit, Blackwater. However, he expressed skepticism about the report of his death. I believe it to be a drama, he said. Imam was reportedly executed by his captors and his body was thrown near Maram Shah, the North Waziristan Agency's headquarters in the Dandi Darpakel region. Despite this, locals claim they have not seen the body. In Peshawar, a top security officer also declined to acknowledge the killing. The official told the Express Tribune, We also have reports of his death, but we cannot confirm it. However, a family member of Colonel Imam told the media that the event had been reported to them by intelligence sources. The assassinations of Khalid Khwaja and Colonel Imam reflect the Islamist group's growth in Pakistan. While these organizations had links to the Pakistani state in the past, the government and security apparatus have lost control of many of the Islamist fighters operating along the border. Nonetheless, Colonel Imam's death has had ramifications for the Taliban movement as a whole. The killing might have strained relations between the TTP and other Islamist insurgents, especially the Afghan Taliban and the Haqqani network. Jihadist figures who worked with Colonel Imam during the anti-Soviet struggle were vocal in their displeasure with the TTP and Hakimullah Mesut, publicly denouncing him for assassinating the former ISI officer. Mesut was killed in 2013 by a US drone strike. We hope you enjoyed our video on the guerrilla specialist and well-decorated Colonel Imam. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe as more exciting videos are coming soon.